In Sao Paulo, Brazil, a would-be motorcycle thief who attempted to pull off a daring heist at a traffic light was shot by a police officer coming home from work. A rider on a Honda motorcycle was seen speeding down a street overtaking cars before slowing down at an intersection because of busy traffic. After he was forced to slow down, two men on another bike subsequently pulled up in front of him in the middle of the intersection. The man on the back of that bike, later identified as 35-year-old Escarante Leonardo Santos, pulled out a 38 caliber handgun and pointed it at the victim, ordering him off his Honda, which he did. As Santos was about to pull away, a police officer got out of a vehicle across the intersection. The officer then fired two shots at Santos, causing him to fall to the ground as the other suspect fled. According to the Brazilian newspaper Folia, Santos had gunshot wounds in the stomach and leg. He was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery. It was unclear if he survived. The Sao Paulo civil police released a statement saying that the action of the officer was justified. The entire incident was caught on the theft victim's helmet camera. The footage was posted on YouTube in October of 2013. A YouTube user who commented on the video post claimed that the other suspect was apprehended shortly after the incident. Number 10. Sean Cowie in January of 2021, police in Manchester, England launched an investigation after an innocent bystander reported that his car had been struck by a stray bullet during a shootout in the suburb of Harpuri. After a trawl scanning through CCTV footage in the area, investigators found the moment that 32-year-old Sean Cowie, who was in the backseat of a dark grey BMW X5, pointed a gun at a black Volkswagen Golf that he and his two accomplices were chasing near a primary school on Briscoe Lane. The BMW was being driven by 39-year-old Dean Urey and 43-year-old Paul Ryan was identified to have been in the car as well. According to Sky News, Cowie, Ryan and Urey eventually pleaded guilty to a number of offenses in court after police presented them with the evidence. In March of 2022, Cowie was jailed for five years and seven months for conspiracy with intent to cause fear or violence. Ryan was handed a six and a half year sentence for possession of a shotgun without a license and conspiracy with intent to cause fear or violence. Yuri was sentenced to five years and four months in prison for conspiracy with intent to cause fear or violence. Number 9. William Kyle Carruth On November the 5th of 2021, a Texas man fatally shot his partner's ex-husband during an ongoing child custody dispute. The deadly confrontation was caught on cell phone video which later went viral on social media. 54-year-old Chad Reed went to a Lubbock residence located on 90th Street to pick up his children. The home belonged to his estranged wife's new partner, William Kyle Carruth. Footage showed that upon Chad's arrival, he started arguing with his ex-wife, Christina. During Chad and Christina's ensuing argument, Carruth was at the home's porch but subsequently went inside the residence. Chad continued the verbal dispute with Christina when moments later, Carruth came back out with a rifle yelling, Leave! Setting off a deadly confrontation on the porch. The men were suddenly inches from each other's face and when Chad attempted to grab the rifle, Carruth moved away from the porch and fired a shot at Chad. The latter instantly fell to the floor and appeared unconscious. When authorities arrived, Chad had already died. In the aftermath, the Office of the Attorney General acting as Attorney Pro Tem presented the investigation into the ordeal to a special grand jury of Lubbock County. According to KCBD, the presentation of the case included several eyewitnesses, including the family of Chad and additional evidence. After a thorough inspection of the evidence, the special grand jury concluded their investigation on April the 1st of 2022. They reportedly voted not to indict criminal charges against Carruth because the argument was on his property and the shooting had been in self-defense. Number 8. Shooting in North Philadelphia In the wake of a shooting that transpired on May the 30th of 2022, the city of Philadelphia is offering a reward of $20,000 for information leading to an arrest and conviction. Shortly before 7 p.m. on the evening in question, two Pennsylvania men were shot on the 1700 block of West Oxford Street. The 23-year-old victim was critically injured, while the other victim, aged 26, succumbed to his injuries on the scene. According to law enforcement, both victims were intentionally targeted 
Authorities released surveillance video from the footage showing four of the suspects in a stolen vehicle. Three of the suspects got out of a vehicle, spread out on the street and ambushed the two victims. The video also revealed that the driver of the vehicle also fired a handgun at the victims as he slowly drove through the intersection, waiting for the other three suspects to return to the vehicle. When everything was set and done, nearly 70 shots had been fired by the gunman. The homicide unit of the Philadelphia Police Department is still seeking the suspects as of October 2023. Subsequent information indicated that the vehicle was recovered, but not a single arrest has been made. Number 7. Roger Hurd Jr. Attorneys representing the family of a Tennessee man who'd been fatally shot by police at a Chattanooga gas station asserted that the officers had used excessive force and had violated the victim's constitutional rights. Officers in plain clothes reportedly attempted to arrest 34-year-old Roger Hurd on multiple warrants on August the 11th of 2023. During the confrontation, officers allegedly shot Hurd even when he was already on the ground. Attorneys representing Hurd's family said that the officers acted recklessly and irresponsibly upon serving the warrant at the Speedway gas station where the incident took place. Hurd's parents spoke to the media on September the 13th, calling on the community for additional footage of the shooting to be released publicly. Following the incident, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation investigated at the direction of District Attorney Cody Wamp. Surveillance video at the crime scene released by Wamp's office showed a glimpse of what had transpired. According to Wamp's statement, the video showed Heard firing at officers first before they returned fire. Wamp cited Heard's criminal history, which included aggravated burglary, felony convictions for selling drugs, and firearm violations. The three officers involved in Heard's shooting, namely Seltane Batterson, Christopher Dias and Nicholas Ears were placed on paid administrative leave. A Chattanooga Police Department spokesperson stated that Dias and Ears were on leave for seven days. Batterson, who was shot during the incident, was placed back on modified duty 13 days after the shooting while he continued his recovery. The district attorney will decide whether to charge the officers involved pending the outcome of the TBI's investigation. Number 6 masked shooter at large. The Philadelphia Police Department and the Shooting Investigation Group sought the public's assistance for information in a somewhat bizarre and unexplained shooting incident that occurred on July the 20th of 2022. A 34-year-old Pennsylvania man was shot in both legs while standing outside of a local grocery store at 41st Street and Lancaster Avenue at approximately 6.40 p.m. He was reportedly transported to Penn Presbyterian Hospital and listed in stable condition. The gunman allegedly arrived and then absconded in a blue Hyundai Santa Fe. According to Chief Inspector Scott Small, the victim ran inside a store when the gunshots began. The masked gunman subsequently followed the victim into the store and fired two more times. Small also said that the entire shooting was captured on nearby surveillance cameras. No motives had been determined and no arrests were reported as of the latest updates. Number 5. Darius Miles and Michael Lynn Davis A grand jury in Tuscaloosa, Alabama indicted Darius Miles and Michael Lynn Davis with capital murder in the death of 23-year-old Jameer Janae Harris. The incident unfolded in the early hours of January the 15th of 2023. According to Harris's family, Harris and her boyfriend went to a club with other friends and then stopped on the way home to grab something to eat with her cousin. While they were sitting in the car waiting for their food, one of the suspects allegedly approached their vehicle and was trying to talk to Harris. She and her cousin then said they didn't want to talk because they had a boyfriend, to which the suspect responded by telling them they didn't know who he was and said, I smack people. In fear of what might happen, Harris's group decided to leave immediately. They were, however, blocked from leaving and one of the suspects started approaching the car with a gun to which her boyfriend reacted by reaching for his own gun. Almost immediately, the sound of at least 10 consecutive gunshots rang out, captured by a nearby ring doorbell camera and causing passers-by to flee in fear. Harris's boyfriend maneuvered the car away from the scene, but it was already too late. Harris got hit once as she sat in the passenger seat and she was later pronounced dead at the scene. Police said that after reviewing surveillance footage and interviewing several witnesses, investigators determined the identities of the suspects in the shooting. 21-year-old Miles and 20-year-old Davis were arrested in an area near the Tuscaloosa campus known as The Strip. 
Court documents indicated that Davis was accused of firing the gun that killed the young woman. Investigators believe that even though the gun used to kill Harris belonged to Miles, that Davis pulled the trigger. The killing of Harris became a major storyline around the Alabama's Crimson Tide men's basketball team as Miles, who played as a forward for the NCAA team, was kicked off the team in the wake of the shooting. As of the latest updates, Miles and Davis pleaded not guilty and were jailed without bond while awaiting trial. Number 4. Vanessa Singletary Selby In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, seven people were shot shortly before 2.30 p.m. on September the 20th of 2021. Local law enforcement responded to the 1300 block of West Chew Avenue, where they found one of the victims identified as Stephen Jones suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. The 26-year-old was transported to Albert Einstein Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead shortly before 3 p.m. The other victims were also taken to the hospital and placed in stable condition. According to the police, Jones was standing on a crowded sidewalk when the shooter opened fire from inside a car. Surveillance footage revealed that the crowd of people dropped to the ground in an attempt to dodge the bullets being fired from a silver Chrysler sedan. Five months later, 28-year-old Vanessa Singletary Selby was arrested in connection with the incident. Investigators said Singletary Selby allegedly ordered the hit in retaliation for a dispute with one of the victims, who was wounded in the shooting. She was charged with homicide and conspiracy and denied bail. CBS News reported that Singletary Selby hadn't been cooperative and the identity of the shooter remained unknown. Number 3. Anbria D. Murnahan An Ohio woman accused of shooting a gun into the air on June the 27th of 2021 in the 300 block of Bulkley Avenue in Mansfield turned herself into authorities. Glimpses of the incident were caught on video by a witness. It showed the suspect firing two rounds from a semi-automatic handgun during an altercation. The suspect, later identified as 25-year-old Anbria D. Murnahan, fled the scene in a vehicle before officers arrived. Murnahan was identified through tips received from residents. Major Crimes served a search warrant at her residence on June the 30th and recovered items believed to be used during the crime, including a firearm. However, she was not at home. She did, however, turn herself in the following day and was booked into the Richland County Jail. She was charged with two counts of third-degree felony discharging a firearm on or over a road. In March of 2022, the Mansfield News Journal reported that Murnahan was sentenced to three years of probation. Number 2. Salvatore Zottola 41-year-old Salvatore Zottola who was the son of a reputed associate of an infamous Italian-American crime family, was shot at around 6.30 a.m. on July the 11th of 2018. The incident, which took place outside his residence in the Bronx, New York, was captured on surveillance video. Footage showed Salvatore rolling on the street in an apparent attempt to avoid being shot by a gunman in a dark-colored sedan. The unidentified assailant got out of the passenger seat of the vehicle and shot Salvatore multiple times before fleeing the scene. The victim sustained several shots to his torso and left hand, as well as graze wounds to his head. He was hospitalized in critical condition but survived. Three months later, his father, 71-year-old Sylvester Zottola, was shot several times and killed while ordering at a Bronx McDonald's drive through According to police, Sylvester had been a reputed crime figure who was affiliated with the Bonanno crime family. Investigators initially believed that the attempts on the father and son's lives were mob hits or a former business associate wanting them dead, but they didn't find enough evidence to support that theory. Meaningful developments came about after a tracking device on Sylvester's car was found by investigators. It revealed that Salvatore's younger brother, Anthony Sotola Sr., was behind the attacks. Anthony was allegedly trying to take over his father's $45 million real estate empire. According to court records, he had schemed against his family for more than a year, paying an accumulated amount of more than $200,000 to hire killers. Anthony was arrested on June the 17th of 2019. Three years later, he was convicted of murder for hire, conspiracy to commit murder for hire, and firearms offenses. He was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Our video about when witnessing a crime goes wrong is lined up for you after number one. In case you can't get enough of our content 
just yet. Number one, Shamika Burton. A Michigan woman wanted for her involvement in a shooting at a Project Greenlight gas station in Detroit was caught on high definition video. The incident, which unfolded on March the 20th of 2016, began shortly after 4 a.m. when the woman and four other people traveling in a Dodge Charger pulled up to the gas station on Fenkel Street near Greenfield Road. They reportedly drove up alongside a Pontiac Grand Prix. According to Detroit police, an argument erupted between the people in both cars. The woman retrieved a gun from her car and put it in her skirt. She then walked to the Grand Prix and fired multiple times into the other car, striking the driver more than once. The driver, who was being shot at, tried to get away, knocking down one of the men from the blue charger in his attempts to do so. At that moment, another man was able to wrestle the gun away from the shooter, and both cars quickly left the scene. The injured man was taken to a local hospital, where he was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Through the security footage taken from the gas station, investigators identify the woman as 20-year-old Shamika Burton. She and an unidentified male were arrested on the same day. In July of 2016, Burton pleaded guilty to armed robbery charges and pleaded no contest to assault and weapons charges. A Wayne County judge later accepted the pleas and sentenced her to 10 to 20 years for assault with intent, two years for weapons charges, and two to five years on other charges. Number 9. Kayla Campos New Mexico woman, Kayla Campos, and her boyfriend Sydney were playing Pokemon Go at an Albuquerque park late one night in October of 2019 when they witnessed a robbery in progress. The couple attempted to simply leave the park and got into 21-year-old Campos' car to drive away. However, one of the thieves later identified as 19-year-old Isaiah Garcia approached the vehicle and fired several rounds at the fleeing couple. Campos crashed the car into an empty house after one of the bullets struck her on the neck, while her boyfriend was left unharmed by the altercation. Campos ultimately succumbed to her injuries at the hospital later that night. Garcia fled before the arrival of police, and New Mexico authorities didn't identify him as Campos' killer until an entire year later. In September of 2020, Garcia was charged with first-degree murder while already awaiting trial for murdering high school student Sean Market at a homecoming party just a month before the Pokemon Go attack. Number 8. Jean Silla On July the 3rd of 2021, Jean Silla, a professional golfer and director of the Pine Tree Country Club in Kennesaw, Georgia, was gunned down by an armed assailant. Earlier on the day of the incident, the gunman, identified as 23-year-old Brian Roden, had crashed a white pickup truck into the club's 10th green. Before attempting to flee, 41-year-old Silla approached the area of the accident to check on the condition of the passengers, whereupon he discovered the bound bodies of 76-year-old Paul Pearson and 46-year-old Henry Valdez inside the vehicle. Sometime shortly thereafter, Roden fired the fatal rounds into Silla. Investigators later expressed their belief that the victim had been murdered because he witnessed an active crime taking place. Later that day, Roden was arrested for an unrelated traffic violation, and although he appeared nervous while being processed, officers at the station weren't initially aware of his involvement in the triple murder. Roden was ultimately released three days later, but the money he'd been carrying at the time of his arrest was confiscated. When a warrant was subsequently issued for his arrest in connection to the murders, police used the money as bait, leading Roden to believe he could return to the station to retrieve his belongings. He was then taken into custody again, but denied any involvement in the killings, proclaiming his innocence in an Instagram post on the day of his arrest. Number 7. Robert Ray and Mario Owens 21-year-olds Robert Ray and Mario Owens were involved in a violent altercation while attending a music festival in Aurora, Colorado on July the 4th of 2004. After the young men were confronted by the event's organizers named as Javad Marshall Fields and Gregory Van for their alleged inappropriate behavior, a contentious argument erupted between the two parties. The altercation eventually turned physical when Ray attacked Marshall Fields while Owens fatally shot Van 
Following the violence, the two assailants fled the scene. Concerned that Marshall Fields might testify against them in court, Owens and Ray subsequently devised a plot to silence him. In June of 2005, roughly a year after the initial incident, the pair murdered Marshall Fields, along with his fiancée, Vivian Wolfe. For the cold-blooded double homicide, both Owens and Ray were ultimately sentenced to death following their criminal trials. Numerous appeals were filed by the defense, but the verdict was upheld by the Colorado Supreme Court on each occasion. Then, in March of 2020, Colorado Governor Jared Polis issued a commutation for the two men. Their sentences were changed to life without parole in a ruling that shocked Marshall Fields' mother, State Senator Rhonda Fields, who stated, he's made his decision, so I guess I have to live through that, just like I had to live with the death of my son. Number 6. Barry Fields on September the 18th of 2021, 51-year-old Barry Fields was caught in the middle of what investigators have called a Wild West shootout. While sitting on his front porch in Norristown, Pennsylvania, on the night of the incident, Edwin Elas Cruz, aged 23, pulled in front of Fields' house in a Toyota Camry and proceeded to open fire on a group of men standing on the sidewalk, which reportedly included 25-year-old Brandon Darden and Joshua Aguido Jr., aged 20. The latter two returned fire, with at least 20 shots fired, being reported by a witness during a subsequent call to 911. Although he'd only been an innocent bystander, Fields was caught in the crossfire and fatally shot in the head, the only lethal victim. Darden and Aguido Jr. were apprehended by the police and charged with first-degree murder, while Ila Cruz was arrested in Nebraska the following month at which time he was extradited back to Pennsylvania. Police haven't released the reason behind the public shootout, explaining only that it had been the result of an ongoing dispute between the parties involved. Although first-degree murder charges are usually reserved for homicides committed with deliberation, the prosecutor resorted to a legal concept known as transferred intent, in which premeditation is shifted from the real target to the actual victim. Bail cannot be granted to suspects charged with this crime in the state of Pennsylvania so the defendants weren't eligible for release prior to their criminal trials. Number 5. Shatavia Walls 33-year-old Shatavia Walls was shot dead in her East New York housing complex by members of the 90 Gang on July the 7th of 2020. Prior to the shooting, Walls had complained about fireworks being used during the 4th of July celebrations by her neighbor, Malik Miller. This wasn't the first time she'd gotten into a confrontation with Miller and his associates. The 27-year-old man had previously called her a snitch, and flyers were posted around the building labeling Walls a rat after she testified against another member of Miller's gang in a 2019 federal case. Then, on the night of her death, Walls attempted to escape her attackers, who had been waiting for her to leave her apartment by running in the opposite direction and jumping over a ledge. However, the gangsters later identified as Miller, Quentin Green, Cheyenne Fernandez and Kevin Wint, all in their 20s, gunned the woman down execution style. Walls survived the attack but would die at the hospital 10 days later due to the severity of her wounds. All four suspects were charged with first-degree murder as well as racketeering, trafficking illegal substances, and robbery. Number 4. Byron Nicholas On August the 5th of 2019, Louisiana resident Hassan Norris refused to pull over his car for an unnamed police officer who'd caught him speeding. The 23-year-old motorist drove all the way to his apartment building and proceeded to fire several gunshots at the officer chasing behind him. The policeman was ultimately left unharmed, but Norris was eventually apprehended and charged with attempted first-degree murder of a police officer and aggravated flight from an officer. The defendant was released on bail then failed to show up for a scheduled court appearance. On October the 18th of 2021, and a warrant was issued for his arrest. While on the lam, Norris sent several threats to his 24-year-old neighbor, Byron Nicholas, who had reportedly witnessed the attack that precipitated his initial arrest. On February the 21st of 2022, Norris re-emerged and shot Nicholas to death, a crime that could have been avoided, according to the victim's mother, if the suspect 
and remained in custody during the duration of his trial. Norris was arrested once again and, as of the latest updates on the case, was awaiting trial at the Jefferson Parish Correctional Center. Number 3. Gerard Gethard In November of 2020, Gerard Gethard murdered petty criminal Jerry White, aged 34, after waiting for him outside a tattoo shop in Norristown, Philadelphia. The deadly attack was reportedly meant as retaliation for White agreeing to serve as a witness against Gethard in his upcoming court proceedings. During a previous incident, 31-year-old Gethard had shot White in the arm, resulting in him incurring attempted murder charges. According to subsequent reports that contextualized the two men's feud, Gethard had learned of White's deal with the prosecution during preliminary hearings and would later overhear his defense attorney claiming the case depended on the account of a single witness. Without White, the lawyer told the judge, the matter would never get to trial. After the star witness's body was discovered, Get Heard immediately became the prime suspect, given his unique connection to the victim, and was apprehended soon after the attack. In February of 2022, the jury declared Get Heard guilty after deliberating for just 30 minutes, and presiding judge Gary Slow sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole, stating that he'd crushed the lives of so many people who care for him. Number 2. Letitia Gallegos on Christmas Eve 2006, Colorado woman Natisha Gallegos was stabbed over 60 times by her ex-husband, Albert, in her Denver home. The 30-year-old woman's corpse was discovered the following morning by her family, but fortunately, none of her three children were present during the attack. Natisha had reportedly obtained a restraining order against Albert after their separation, but he'd violated it a month prior to the deadly incident after she'd refused to take him back. In retaliation, Albert had assaulted his former partner, threatening her with a knife as he taunted her, asking her if he should kill her. That particular altercation had culminated with the man eventually letting Natisha go before stealing her car. Prior to her untimely death, the woman had reportedly been planning to testify against her ex in court. However, Albert ultimately eliminated a key witness against him and enacted a vengeful attack on his ex-wife in one fell swoop. The man later admitted to standing outside of Natisha's condo for over 45 minutes before he finally broke in and attacked her. Following the murder, Albert attempted to flee but was arrested two days later in Los Angeles, California, after which he was extradited back to Colorado. The man ultimately pleaded guilty on August the 22nd of 2008 and was consequently sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Number 1. Heather Gamina Waters On July the 15th of 2019, Arkansas man Anthony Gamina attacked his wife, Heather Gamina Waters, at their shared residence, inflicting severe injuries that ultimately landed her in the hospital. The 33-year-old victim, a mother of three who'd reportedly been suffering repeated domestic violence for several months, didn't contact the authorities after the alleged assault and instead called her mother, Joanna Russell, telling her that her husband had tried to kill her. Russell accompanied her daughter back home the following day, but she ended up leaving for the night after witnessing an argument between the contentious couple about how Gamina Waters' injuries would affect Anthony's ongoing domestic assault charges. Once the mother had left, Anthony proceeded to fatally strangle his wife with his bare hands and dragged her around the house with a rope strapped to her neck after she was already dead. He then faked her disappearance by reporting her missing, even joining her mother in the ensuing search efforts. Anthony's lies were eventually uncovered when Gamina Waters' body was found buried on a property near the family's home. She'd been wrapped in a carpet and was still wearing her hospital ID bracelet and sling. On June the 23rd of 2021, Anthony pleaded guilty to first-degree murder but claimed that his wife was to blame for hurting his pride and honor. Presiding Judge Mark Ralphs sentenced the man to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years served and responded to his claims about Gamina Waters stating, you're going to have plenty of time to contemplate how your conduct has impacted your honor and your name. 
Thanks for watching. Would you rather get hit in the butt by a stray bullet or wear a bullet ant glove? Let us know in the comments section below.